Yes, so far all the evidence suggests that this vac this uh, the available vaccines, both the Pfizer and the Moderna, seem to be effective against this uh, variant. There's a lot of people looking at it right now, but there's from a molecular standpoint, from a biological standpoint, there's no reason to suspect they would not be effective. That is very good news. And as we do understand in South Africa and the UK, it might be more transmissible. In other words, a lot easier to go from me to you or you to me or whatever, but it does not appear to be more dangerous. Is that also correct? Th that is correct. Uh, what, what this mutation does is it appears to increase the uh, affinity of the virus to the respiratory, to the respiratory cells. It, it, it attaches more readily to the, what we call the ACE2 receptor. And it's not just that mutation, but two other mutations in existence in the virus. It's a combination of three mutations that seems to increase what we call the r naught, the transmissibility by about 0.4. So this virus thought, we thought had a transmissibility about 2.5 to three, which means one person infects two and a half to three people. If this increases by 0.4, then the same virus now will infect three to three and a half people. So therefore, the number of people infected increases significantly. Yeah, that R naught goes up dramatically. But I guess, doctor, in its increased transmissibility would be de facto increased risk as well. If you're saying it's attaching to those ACE2 inhibitors, that would mean that vulnerable members of the population, the elderly, those with high body mass indexes or other underlying conditions, in some ways it would be more dangerous for them because it may be more easy for them to catch. Well, that's a good point. It, it is more easy for them to catch, but the virus itself is not more severe. So in other words, once you get sick, the disease outcome is no different. Therefore, you know, it is not a more lethal or more severe virus. It is simply because there's more transmission to more people, you would probably have more sick people, but it's not because the virus is more severe. It's because the number of people infected is higher. Yeah, and, and there's some worry out there, and obviously we're CNBC, so we talk about the economic impacts of this stuff. And there are people saying, well, what if the virus comes here, this new strain? Doctor, it's clear it's got to be here already circulating in the U.S. population. We're learning now that, that COVID existed in the U.S. in December, if not earlier, and maybe parts of China as early as October. It's, it seems logical that that strain would already starting to be circulating here, correct? Yeah, absolutely. I think the, the strain is already here, and that's why... You know, limiting flights and other things like that. By the time you do it, it's almost like the horse is out of the barn. Now, some of the things that are happening is we have to increase our surveillance. We have to increase our molecular surveillance. I think uh, what some airlines are doing, like, you know, British Airways and Delta, of starting to test passengers to make sure people that get on planes are COVID negative is a good idea. I think we have to do more testing at airports. The reality is testing is one way to prevent strains from moving in different directions. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.